The, the Council on Foreign Relations, uh, I don't know if I'm a official member. I have sp I've spoken there before. And odds are you'll never know what they talk about. A notorious secrecy clause prevents these world leaders from discussing their meetings. You've been talking a lot about lobbyists and money in politics. Obama's eight years in the Illinois Senate from 1996 to 2004, almost two-thirds of the money he raised for his campaigns came from political action committees, corporate contributions, unions, according to Illinois Board of Elections records. He tapped financial service firms, real estate developers, health care providers, oil companies, many other corporate interests, the records show. I'm the only candidate in this race who has really pushed hard to reduce the influence of lobbyists. A newly installed Treasury Secretary, Timothy Geithner, appointed Mark Patterson, and this is a former top lobbyist for Goldman Sachs as his chief of staff. And then last week, there was a lot of buzz over William Lynn. He was the, appointed to the number two position at the Defense Department. William Lynn, also a former top lobbyist for Raytheon, which is a, uh, a, one of the five largest defense contractors. The way Bush has done it over the last eight years is to take out a credit card from the Bank of China in the name of our children, driving up our national debt from $5 trillion for the first 42 presidents, number 43 added $4 trillion by his lonesome, that's irresponsible. It's unpatriotic. In Obama's first three years, the total federal debt went from $10.6 trillion to $15.4 trillion, an increase of 45%. Here's an accurate picture of where the debt increase stands as of January 31, 2012. I will not sign a plan that adds one dime to our deficits, either now or in the future. And the plan I'm proposing will cost around $900 billion dollars over 10 years and the CBO as opposed to March of 2010 when the estimates you heard the president say 938 billion now the new estimate is 1.762 trillion dollars and that is why I am reappointing him to another term as chairman of the Federal Reserve been approached a financial system on the verge of collapse with calm and wisdom so who got the money to financial institutions in, in Europe and other countries. Which ones? I don't know. Half a trillion dollars and you don't know who got the money? In 2009, Solyndra received $535 million in federal loan guarantees to expand production of cutting edge solar panels, part of the president's promise to create millions of so-called green jobs. But last month, Solyndra declared bankruptcy, laying off all 1,100 workers. Do you think that you might have the unemployment rate down to 8% by the, by the time the election rolls around? I think it's possible. But if you dig deeper, you'll find there's not really much to celebrate. That's because about half the decline is due to people giving up on finding work. 315,000 people simply stopped looking. There are currently more than 13 million people out of work here in the U.S. I will provide our intelligence and law enforcement agencies with the tools they need to track and take out the terrorists without undermining our Constitution and our freedom. That means no more illegal wiretapping of American citizens. No more national security letters to spy on citizens who are not suspected of a crime. No more tracking citizens who do nothing more than protest a misguided war. No more ignoring the law when it is inconvenient. That is not who we are. President Barack Obama has signed a one-year extension of several provisions in the nation's main counterterrorism law, the Patriot Act. They authorize court-approved roving wiretaps to permit phone surveillance. They also allow the seizure of records and property. This administration acts like violating civil liberties is the way to enhance our security. It is not. The National Defense Authorization Act. It gives the military the power to indefinitely detain American citizens, even those captured here in the United States, suspected, just suspected, not convicted, of some sort of involvement or affiliation with terrorism. So no trial. Prison based solely on suspicion. Prevented. We will incarcerate people preventively. Preventive incarceration. 
indefinite detention without trial. That's what, that's what this is. That's what President Obama proposed today. Indefinitely, with no charges against them, no conviction, no sentence, just imprisonment. There's a so-called trespassing bill, which now awaits President Obama's signature, that effectively serves as the nail in a coffin on the First Amendment. H.R. 347 criminalizes protests by making it a federal crime to disrupt, even by accident, any event attended by someone with Secret Service protection. H.R. 347 gives federal agents sweeping powers to arrest and bring felony charges against citizens engaged in protests where the Secret Service is present. But I intend to close Guantanamo and I will follow through on that. Uh, I've said repeatedly that America doesn't torture and I'm going to make sure that we don't torture. Yesterday, President Obama signed an executive order claiming the right to incarcerate persons in the Guantanamo Bay military prison for the duration of their natural lives even after acquittal. You heard that correctly after acquittal. Now the president signed the National Defense Resources Preparedness Executive Order late Friday afternoon. And since that time, now the measure has been virtually ignored by the mainstream media. Now the order essentially gives the president of the United States absolute power over any and all American resources during both times of peace and national crisis. Now this includes, but is not limited to, food and livestock, water, plants, energy, health resources, transportation, and construction. Construction materials. It gives the president the power to control U.S. resources in times of war and peace. This would give the president of the United States the authority to declare basically martial law during times of peace. And to be sure, this is simply the latest string of actions taken by the administration that ignore the basic principles of our Constitution. In terms of legalization of drugs, I think that the, the battle. Uh, the war on drugs has been a utter failure. The Obama administration raided more than 100 dispensaries in its first three years and is now poised to outpace the Bush administration's crackdown record. Uh, and I think that we need to rethink and decriminalize uh, our, uh, our marijuana laws. I am not in favor of legalization. Obama operatives in the Congress have introduced more than 10 bills that would end the Second Amendment as we know it. H.R. 1022 would allow the new Attorney General Eric Holder the dictatorial power to ban any gun he wishes at will. And what we need to do is change the way in which people think about guns, especially young people, and make it something that's not cool, that it's not acceptable, it's not hip uh, to carry a gun anymore. We're beginning to bring our troops home from Afghanistan. When I took office, roughly 180,000 troops were deployed in both these wars. And by the end of this year, that number will be cut in half. And make no mistake, it will continue to go down. I have determined that it is in our vital national interest to send an additional 30,000 U.S. troops to Afghanistan. This is what's happened uh, during President Obama's first year in office. And this is what he's just announced he's going to do by next summer. And then nine days after that, he flies to Oslo to get his Nobel Peace Prize. How about Afghanistan? A new announcement there today as well. Looks like uh, we might be striking a deal to stay there until 2024. <laughs> I'll do the math for you. That's 13 years from now. After taking office, I announced a new strategy that would end our combat mission in Iraq and remove all of our troops by the end of 2011. Well, maybe not. No, it looks like we're going to have, no, no, no. Uh, the administration assures us that we won't have combat troops there because that is what President Obama has promised, that we might leave over 10,000, and that's a conservative number, non-combat troops. <laughs> will they have guns? Oh, yeah, they'll have guns. But they will be trainers. So <laughs> are we staying in Iraq a lot longer? You betcha. It's a fortress that few taxpayers have ever seen, the largest embassy in the world. 27 buildings, 104 acres, housing for 600 people, offices for up to 1,600, and amenities not seen by most Iraqis, a swimming pool, indoor and outdoor basketball courts, seen here in pictures obtained from the contractor, First Kuwaiti. Construction costs for the embassy and additional security now more than $700 million and still climbing. Plus, Congress says more than $2 billion a year once it opens for the State Department just to operate the whole complex. For duty in an embassy so big, critics say, it makes it look like the U.S. will be occupying Baghdad forever. So all that talk of withdrawal and leaving at some point that all the pretty speeches that President Obama has given, 
nonsense. Iran, Cuba, Venezuela, these countries are tiny compared to the Soviet Union. They don't pose a serious threat to us. Iran is a grave threat. It has an illicit nuclear program. It supports terrorism across the regions and militias in Iraq. Do you think that you can act without Congress uh, to and initiate a no-fly zone in Syria without congressional approval? You know, again, uh, our, our goal would be to, uh, to seek international permission, and uh, we, would, we would come to the Congress uh, and inform you uh, and determine uh, how best to approach this, uh, whether or not we would uh, want to get uh, permission from the Congress. Uh, I think those are issues we would have to discuss as we decide what to do here. The military budget firmly cements Barack Obama's place as the biggest pro-war president in two generations. I mean, we're, we're in Afghanistan. Pakistan, according to Leon Panetta this morning, said we're at war with Pakistan. We're already in Iraq. We've now done Libya. We're doing Yemen quietly. And who knows about Syria? So that's five undeclared wars with no particular goal. But uh, boys don't get any ideas. I have two words for you. Predator drones. <laughs> You will never see it coming. And the New York Times reporting late last night that the Obama administration has decided to expand the use of drone attacks in Pakistan by our CIA. I want to make sure that people understand actually drones have not caused a huge number of civilian casualties. And between two and three thousand people have been killed by drones in Pakistan. And of those, as many as 780 are civilians. 175 have been children, and of the 312 drone strikes that have taken place, President Obama has issued 260 of them. The United States is not going to deploy ground troops into Libya. Four U.S. service members arrived on the ground in Tripoli over the weekend to help rebuild the embassy. There he is, crowds surrounding him. The last bloody moments of his life show him wounded and begging for mercy. As we came, we saw, he died. <laughs> We were surprised to get word today of a new overseas deployment of U.S. troops. Federal, uh, President Obama has ordered American forces into another war zone, Central Africa. 100 combat-equipped troops are being sent to advise and train local forces who are battling rebels terrorizing four countries, including Uganda and South Sudan.